Hello and welcome to a brand new video of the Homemade Drone Channel. So on today's video we're going to be dismantling the previous 550mm drone and creating a brand new drone from scratch from all of its components. To know if that is doable or not, uh, we already posted a previous video, if you didn't check it, uh, I would really recommend you to click on the on the link that I'm going to be providing here on the video and check how the calculations are done and in this particular video we are going to be checking on how to build the so hope you enjoy it and hope we get something good from it so mainly this is my previous frame this is a, the 550 uh, frame with the 1000 revolutions per bolt uh, motors so challenge was definitely to set a brand new setup with a much smaller uh, drone that could still hoover and lift uh, the ground. So after this mounting you can already see all those four motors, uh, then the flight controller which is a cryo solving one, uh, the receiver and also the power distribution board. And mainly this is really straightforward, we have all the instructions provided, so we just need to follow the, the steps on the, on, the, on the instructions. Mainly it's just to put it like this. Uh, remember also to put the landing gear. It's a really, really, it's actually like a piece of plastic, it's not a real landing gear, but that could do the effect here. I do always recommend whenever we are creating a brand new build, a brand new frame build, I really recommend to put all of the nails and all of the spacers together so that we know how many of each type do we have and what are they are going to be for. Okay, so once we have it clear, we are going to be starting to put the nail uh, on the part below and then we are going to be uh, putting the spacer above. So let's do it. Good, so we already have three spacers there, so this is going to be the next piece. It's really straightforward, it's not really complicated. Uh, but I think I really wanted to create a video with all those steps and also because there are a couple of tricks here that I can definitely mention when, when creating a brand new drone, when building a brand new drone uh, but we'll get through it so you can see here the comparison you see it's half the price uh, half the price, sorry <laughs> half have the size of the previous drone also for the landing gear as this is a piece of plastic so I would definitely recommend you to move that a little bit bend it a little bit so that it's easier uh, to install By the way, I have already been trying this drone, uh, it flies, it hoovers, uh, but one of the things that I would like to mention about this is the landing gear is an absolute <laughs> So, meaning within the first flight, I, I didn't actually crash it, I just uh, landed with with the landing gears, I know it's a heavy setup, it's around 850 grams, uh, but they just, what, what really happened on this is that nails are 
Um, the, nail, the nails are nylon nails, they, they are like plastic nails, they are not really like um, aluminium or any other metal nails. So what happened within the landing gears is that just by landing a little bit strongly, uh, they just broke the nails. So I needed to change all of the nails and, and of course I lost the, I lost the landing gears. So not the best thing. So you can definitely just skip that and actually if you just do have your own nails, I would definitely recommend you to change them all. Good, so we already have all the four landing gears, everything has been set up and now we're going to be starting to decide which is the front and which is the back of the drone. So we already put here like the uh, power distribution board, taking into account already what is going to be the front, what is going to be the back. Just remember the plug is going to be on the back for this setup. Yep. And I'm actually putting here this piece above, um, above the power distribution board just to ha have a little bit more stability. So this piece of plastic is not really required but I think it gives a little bit more stability to the whole thing so I also wanted to add it just in case I mean the power distribution board does the same function uh, but I still as you know as it's a brand new frame I wanted to have it built exactly as it says on the on the instructions so this is why I put that there but if you want to skip that you can definitely do that so now we're going to be adding some more spacers and after that, uh, the, the controller is going to go up. On the bottom of the drone is the place that we are already reserving for our battery. It's really important that whenever you start building a brand new drone, uh, whenever you start building your frame, you start thinking on how you are building your components, how you are going to be implementing those components within the drone. So there we go, we are already setting up our flight controller. I didn't even bother to take all the cables for the RC module. So this frame comes with, with longer spacers here, so that is going to be giving a little bit more volume to the whole setup. Uh, sincerely, if you want them a little bit shorter, you can definitely do that. Uh, but for my case, I, I definitely think that was a, like a good setup. I'm not into racing much or anything like that. Although the drone race is pretty well, it's quite quick. What is really a crucial step here is that all of the wires need to be inside the cage so don't let any wires outside because that is the propellers are going to go straight into that wire so it's, it's not that I'm saying if that happens but when that is happening uh, it will of course cut uh, the communication maybe within your drone or anything like that so you want definitely 
to avoid those things from happening. This pack was a little bit challenging because the space provided for the ESCs is not big enough for these 30 amps ESCs that I used to have. So what I did is just blend them, uh, bend them like this and put a breather between them so that I could have a little bit, uh, so I could put them like this, as, as you can see there. There we go, so we already see like three motors mounted. So there is only one remaining, uh, there is one thing here, which is uh, as per as per the power distribution board having a, re a really really uh, wide cable, so this ESC it's a little bit uh, on a higher plane than the rest of them. Uh, that shouldn't really affect much. The only thing is just is just not symmetric, uh, but still the flight controller should be controlling those differences. And we also added here like the band for the battery to secure our battery there. There we go, so all of the motors are already there, in place. And it's time now for a small verification. So we're going to be doing a couple of things. So first of all, uh, we're going to be putting a the multimeter here on the battery slot to see if there is any short circuit. Uh, that's a really good step to do in any new setup just to ensure that you don't have any any short circuit that could be you know lighting up your battery straight away and you, don't, you don't really want that so that's going to be step number one and if that's the case if 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 you're good there we can definitely go to step number two which is going to be check the rotation of the of the motors and if one of the motors is turning in the wrong direction you can just uh, change any of those two wires. Okay, so we get the multimeter, we put it on the, on the position where it beeps. If there is a short and we just need to put it on the two contacts of the battery. And if you hear a noise, uh, that could mean that there is a sh short circuit. If not, uh, we should be good. To okay, so now we're going to be going to plug the battery in for the first time on this setup and check the rotation of the motor. We need to arm it. And then just try to verify one by one that they are on the on the correct rotation. So I'm going to be giving a the schema that needs to follow. It's here. This is the schema that we need to uh, use for the rotation. So mainly the diagonal, so we need to take into account that, that, that diagonal rotation. So uh, the right, the upper right motor needs to turn on the same direction as the lower left motor and the other way around. Uh, I didn't put much attention on how to connect the things. Uh, if you want um, and you request for that, I can definitely record another video on how the connections need to be done, especially for this uh, flight controller, but I think it should be the same for any flight controllers that you have. It's really straightforward, it's not really complicated, but I can definitely do something about that. Okay, so we did all the verification here, so we are going to go ahead and just put the very last part of the motor, which is going to be like the the ceiling, our ceiling of our, our quadricopter. Also ensuring that all of the wires are inside.
so here you see um, like small verification that I did here especially for the ESCs I don't want them to be cut off uh, when I'm flying so I, I put like a little bit more breathers on it um, just to ensure that this is working fine We are almost there, so we just take out the propeller from the previous uh, mount. Uh, take into account this spacer here, this normally comes with a propeller, but we can still reuse the previous ones and just plug it in, and that should, find, that should be working fine. There we go. So, this is all set up already, ready to fly. On the next video, I'm going to be showing a little bit what the problems were with this. Obviously, this was a good setup, it's flying fine, but need, need to uh, check a couple of things because, you know, it's not the, the very first time it didn't fly as, as I wanted to, so <laughs> I just needed to tweak a little bit uh, some configurations here. But hope you enjoy it, hope it clarifies a little bit, hope you like. If you have any questions, leave your comments below and I would definitely like to, to answer your comments. And thank you for watching, have a nice